Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video and today I am bringing you guys a team strategies as well as a team update video. I will try to keep this as quick as possible but you might be wondering uh, why I'm uploading another one of these. I mean I just posted out one like a month ago and uh, over the span of about three or four weeks I, I played about 50 Division 1 games. I faced a lot of easy opponents. I faced a lot of hard opponents as well. A lot of top thousand to top hundred players and I saw a lot of people ex not exploiting but a lot of people taking advantage of the strategies I was using and I really changed them over the past three four weeks and I want to give you guys something a little bit more I um, something that's better I guess for division one if you guys are in division one or maybe if you guys are in division two or three you guys can use it as well so anyways we will we'll go through the team before we start up uh, the team strategies and uh, it's been really disgusting this team Honestly, a lot of my Movember cards that I was, I guess, storing in my account, uh, they got some nice upgrades and I was able to sell them off for a lot of coins. And um, you know what? It turned out pretty well with this team. I was able to buy a lot of players as well. Have a nice little coin stack as well. I said that word like two times already, three times. But however, we will go through the team and I'll show you what I have. So on the first line, we got Patrick Kane. Uh, we got Jonathan Taves, Team of the Week. Uh, recently just purchased him for 500,000 coins and he's been an absolute beast. Uh, I mean, if you guys have a lot of coins, I'm not sure how many of you guys actually have that many many coins. Jonathan Taves is definitely a must-have on any team. His face-offs, his shooting category, he scores me so many goals as well. You should definitely pick him up. Uh, also on the first line, Nathan McKinnon, which I had in my collection, got a nice little boost, so he's on my first line left wing. You can't not have Nathan McKinnon on your first line left wing. He's a 98 skating, 95 shot, 95 hands. Uh, the only player that might be able to replace him is maybe Johnny Goudreau, Team of the Year, but uh, honestly, McKinnon definitely fills that spot very nicely. On the second line, we got Evgeny Malkin, Nicholas Backstrom, and Alexander Ovechkin. Um, you know, Malkin just scores those goals. Everybody's a goal scorer on this line. Just an awesome second line. I don't really like putting them on the first line, and the reason why is because uh, a lot of people see Ovechkin, Malkin, and, you know, Jonathan Taves on the first line, and they immediately quit. And you know what? It's... Obviously, my team is pretty overpowered, but at the same time, like I just want to try playing with these players as well. So, I, I want to just get games going, play on this count, not have people quit most of the time, because that's what basically happens. Uh, it's a little cheap to do, but at the same time, uh, whatever, right? A lot of people have really good teams as well. Alright, anyways, third line, we got Vladimir Tarasenko, uh, Patrice Bergeron, as well as Philip Forsberg, who also got a nice little upgrade. I had three or four uh, Forsbergs that I had in my collection that I, I was kind of predicting that he was getting a team of the year, um, you know, probably around a month ago, and he was going for around 100k before. Now he's shot up to about 200k, so I made a nice little three, 400k profit off of three or four Forsbergs. On the fourth line, we got Phil Kessel, Powell Dadzuk, Taylor Hall. Honestly, this could be anybody's first line, and you know what, this is my fourth line of all lines, and you know what, I, there's just no space on them anywhere else. And that fourth line kind of just kind of fits them. Every every line can score goals. It, it's just absolutely lethal. On the defense, we got Brent Burns, uh, Jonathan Quick, Scott Niedermeyer. Not too much change. I've just seen a lot of people use Scott Niedermeyer. And uh, he is a really good defender. You should definitely try him out. I'm pretty sure he's like 120 or 130k. Uh, you can pick him up for a cheap price. Uh, once again, Hampus Lindholm and Aaron Ekblad. I stick to my word. Hampus Lindholm is one of the best defensemen I've used in this game. Uh, he's only worth about 90 or 100k. He's really quick, very good at defense. I definitely trust him any time in the, the, the defensive zone uh, to pick off passes and just to get the puck out. So Hampus Lindholm, once again, highly recommend you pick him up after I played about 100 games of Division 1. And uh, definitely should take my recommendation. Also on my third line, there's Jake Muzzin and Drew Doughty. Jake Muzzin is kind of a new pickup as well. He was going for about 90k last week before the new team of the week came out. Uh, there was some like premium special packs that came out, the 250k ultimate packs, including also the 125k special player premium pack. So those players just absolutely dropped in price. I was able to snag a Jake Muzzin for about 80 or 90k. And now he's already up to 130k. So it's a pretty nice coin making method. If you guys see like a jumbo player premiums pack or something like that, uh, you should stock up on a team of the year or team of the year players uh, while they're dropping in price and then just sell them later. You can make like 30, 40k off the expensive ones, maybe like 10 or 20k for the cheaper ones. Also, Drew Duddy, awesome defenseman. Cannot complain about him at all. On the backup goalie, we got uh, Ben Bishop. Honestly, just kind of there just to make sure that 
Uh, Jonathan Quick does not get tired. But that is pretty much the team update. So let's go ahead, go right into the team strategies. And I'll show you what I've changed. Okay, so I will try to slow down just a little bit. I want to get the team update out first as quick as possible so you guys can see the team strategies. Uh, you can see that I didn't make too many changes from the last video that I made. However, they are some crucial ones that I want to talk about in this video. So, first of all, 4 check still on 1-2-2 two, two aggressive. Should definitely not keep it off that. Um, neutral zone, I have it on 1-2-2 two, two blue. And the reason why I changed it from 1 and 4 is because I saw a lot of people hold the puck with their defenders and they would not pass the puck unless I 4 checked. Uh, with two or three of my guys and that was kind of a bit of a problem right if you have it on one four only one offender would four check and the other four would stay back so i found a lot of people going into my zone on the one four and having a one two to blue it's a little bit more aggressive but it goes right after the defenders and i saw that that was one of my weaknesses is that when i am pressured a lot by their offensemen uh, I cough up the puck a lot more, I make a lot more mistakes, I give up a lot more goals, so having that on 1-2-2 two, two blue helps out a lot. Uh, trap and forecheck, I have it all the way maxed out. Offensive pressure, I'll have it on full attack. Uh, defensive pressure, I'm not sure if I had it on contained puck before, but high pressure, definitely the one you want to do because it goes very well with the staggered defensive strategy. And the reason why it goes very well with the staggered is that uh, I had it on tight point before, and what I found was, uh, my left wing and my right wing would, no matter what the situation was, if it was a very dangerous situation in front of the net, they would just stick right to the points. And that was a little bit of a problem to me. I needed like four or five guys in my defensive zone, especially if someone was really good at cycling the puck. And having it on staggered definitely changes up the whole defensive game for me at least. Uh, having it on staggered, my guys still pick off the passes in front of the point. However, if say I'm struggling in front of the net, uh, I can bring up one of my guys from the point and uh, it doesn't make too much of a difference. Like Stagger definitely changes off a lot and um, they definitely help out a lot in my defensive strategy. I can't stress that enough. Have it on Stagger. Do not put it on tight point. Stagger is just as good as tight point in my opinion and even better. Alright, so anyways, penalty kill. I have it in a large box. Power play overload. Power, power, power play carry and dump. I have it pretty much maxed out. And the reason why I have this maxed out is because I saw a lot of people, they just like to skate backwards with their defenders when I'm, you know, have like a two or three on two rush or a two on two rush. A lot of people would just skate back and I couldn't get those cross creasers through. And having it all the way up just about, uh, I would skate down, say with my left winger. I would shoot the puck just about on the pads. I will shoot it down low and my other right winger would go right to the net and he would just try to get the puck. And I really think that that power play carry and dump, having it just about 10 really helps out that strategy. So you definitely want to give that a go. Uh, forward lines as well, not too much of a change. The only thing that I've really changed was the efficiency levels. I have them just about a little bit higher than the middle uh, for the first two lines, a little bit lower in the, uh, the the third and fourth line. Sorry, I'm stumbling on my words here. I'm talking quite a lot here, uh, but I have it on just a little bit more than half. You can see there, forward line two, I have it on the middle. Forward line three, a little bit less than halfway. And forward line four, I have it on just the same as the forward line three. And the reason why was I found that by the fifth minute, the final five minutes of a period, my players would be way too slow if I had them all the way maxed out to hear my first or second lines. They would be absolutely dead. And uh, I gave up a lot of goals because my first and second lines were tired. And then my penalty kill lines were just absolutely tired as well. Uh, so having this uh, somewhere in the middle and lower is definitely better. I didn't see that much of a change in my team. Obviously, my team is pretty overpowered, but at the same time, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Now, I think, I really think that you'll see a little bit of a change in, say, how your players perform out on ice if they're less tired and facing against some guys that, say, have their efficiency maxed out. You will have a little bit of an advantage if it's lower, all right? Defensive strategies, a little bit of a change as well. And the reason why I am uh, put this all the way to max on pinch is because uh, having this a lot higher it makes the defenders a lot more aggressive. And I found that when I had this a lot lower the bar, uh, my defenders would just skate back. And most of the time, I would let my defenders do most of the defending. And not going to lie, I played a lot of skill zone as well. However, I'm just having this really high up, it really puts a lot of, takes away the room between the defender and the forward that's coming down on you. And uh, it definitely helps out a lot having this on max. And then you can see here, I have it pretty much all the same for all my defender pairings there 
all pretty much maxed out. And um, if you're on a one-on-two, if say there's a one-on-two defensive rush or offensive rush on you, sorry, and uh, you know you stick to the other other defender, it puts a lot of pressure on their offense. And what what it does is it coughs up the puck a lot, and you can go right ahead, pass the puck away back to the offenseman, and then you have uh, you you're back on the offense, right? I'm saying this word so wrong, offense. You're back on the offense. You're spending less time in the defense. If you can pick up the pass as quick as possible, you'll have a lot more advantage than, say, bring it all the way down here instead of laying them in your zone, shooting the puck on net, and then, you know, some crappy rebound goal goes in. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much maxed out there. And that is pretty much it for my strategies video. Hopefully it was clear. You guys can once again post some, I guess, comments for anything that you're confused about. Uh, but pretty much I just want to bring out this video nice and quick because I want to kind of explain to you guys why my other strategies wasn't working before and and just to update it because I really think you guys deserve to see what I've changed over the past 50 games of Division 1. Uh, however, that's about it. I am tired. I'm, t I'm done talking for today, but that's about it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the strategies video as well as the team update video. If you did like it, make sure to leave a like. Let other people know that you guys enjoyed it as well. Try not to dislike it, but at the same time, if you guys don't, don't like these strategies, which... I don't know, maybe it doesn't work for you. Don't be afraid to, you know, change up the strategies for yourself. But uh, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. That was a very bad defensive play by me, not gonna lie. And he does get a penalty as well. Pass it across to Nishushkin. Drag it back, rifle it, and there it is. Post, and it, I don't know if that hit that post, but that was a nice shot by Nishushkin. Don't know why he's positive, but there it is. Two quick goals.